Hello everybody, this is Tom Ray. I'm the program coordinator for UNLV Gear Up and we are a branch of UNLV The Center. Welcome back for another video on study skills. The first thing I want to talk to you about is why would you pay attention to your study skills? Well, first, you have to know what you want out of life. Depending on what your mission is or your purpose, these skills can be more important or less important for you. Students who are highly motivated are the ones that have a great purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, that's okay. You'll find it in time. But the most important thing is to never give up and to keep searching and being open-minded. So let's go down and see the four different categories that will help you improve your study skills. The first category is note-taking. Note-taking is really important because humans don't have the best memory. As we talked in previous videos, how many of you can remember what you ate for breakfast two weeks ago? I would say almost none of you can. And that goes for me too. It's because we have something called short-term memory and long-term memory. And short-term memory is our working memory. If you guys use a computer, you know that there's something called RAM, which is random access memory. And that's basically memory that's constantly being wiped as you open up programs or load video games. And that's what our short-term memory is too. We just store it there in the working memory. And then once we are done with it, we just forget it. Can you imagine how hard life would be if you had to remember every single detail? So for us, note-taking helps us transfer the short-term memory to long-term memory. Here are a few things that will help you improve your note-taking. When you're in class and you have your teacher there giving you notes, a lot of you might get bored or you might have ADHD or ADD, which means that you get distracted easily. One way of grounding yourself when you're in class is to just start writing what the teacher says and start repeating that in your head. When you do things like this, it really forces you to focus and it translates those notes into your long-term memory so you're more focused on it. Because not only are you seeing those notes being written by your teacher, you're hearing them say it and you're transcribing it on paper. So there's three different methods of memorizing what's going on. You also sometimes can't write as fast as your professor so you want to paraphrase those words. Take up as much space as needed but there are many YouTube videos that will show you different ways of note taking. You can use Cornell notes where you take the subject on one side and the description on the other or other methods of note taking that are beneficial. But in the link below, we'll include some different styles of note taking. Review your notes every night because like I said earlier, if you were to review what you ate for breakfast two weeks ago every night, you'll still remember it today. And that goes the same thing for note taking. The reason why you're taking notes is so that you can look over it all the time and then you're translating it from short-term memory to long-term memory. You can write in shorthand and create abbreviations, jot down any ideas that the professor repeats, but also expand on it. So for example, if the professor is talking about something in the past, like World War II in history, you can start creating your own scenarios or tying it to something in real life today. By creating patterns, and vivid imageries of what the professor is talking about, you're able to strengthen your memory. Notice verbal cues from your professor. When they say, now this is important, or this will be on your test, or make sure you know this, make sure you underline that or highlight that in your notes, which leads us to the next point. Make sure to highlight your book when you're reading certain things, uh, when you're note taking, that, that is important. And also just try and paraphrase main ideas. That concludes note taking. The next thing we wanna touch on a subject that we went over in a previous video. So if you wanna learn more and expand on time management, you can go to our time management video in the same YouTube channel. But time management is extremely important because we have a million things to do each day and we have to be able to prioritize what it is that we want to focus on. One thing that can help you do this is having a to-do list or a project management system. Again, in our project management video, we had something called Trello, which lets you organize your to-do list in a prioritized way. You might also want to use Google Calendar or a planner. Some people like physical planners and some like digital ones. Getting up early and doing stuff in the morning is really important because 
it gives you more time and you're not distracted with people asking you to do this or that, getting text messages. Having a good work ethic is also important. So getting a good amount of sleep and waking up early is the best time to do things. Schedule me time so that you don't burn out. If you want to prioritize and schedule the things you need to do, make sure that you use a time management matrix. Again, in the, in the time management video, we'll have that. And you can make sure that you categorize things as important, not important, urgent, or not urgent. Set aside study and class work hours each day so that you can focus on your homework. Have a spot where studying takes place so your brain and your body knows that when you're in that place, it's time to study. Make or join a study group. And again, in a previous video, we know that if you're the smartest person in the room in that study group, you'll be doing more teaching than learning, which is fine because you actually will learn and absorb the material better in your long-term memory if you're the one teaching it. You don't know something until you can teach it. You also want to read the syllabus or whatever it is that you're doing so that you understand the basic outline. Next, let's move on to our third category, which is test preparation. For test preparation, there's many different ways to study for a test and you have to find out what works for you. So one way is to make flashcards and to test yourself on those flashcards. A lot of you who may be in a relationship in high school, have your girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, test you on subjects and make it fun. Rewrite and reread your notes daily, like we mentioned in note taking. And you might want to reorganize them into categories with highlighter or stickies. Get help from teachers, other students, students or online resources if you need it. Google is a great resource and so is YouTube. Don't cram because when you cram, all that stuff is translated into short-term memory and you don't have enough room or space to move it to long-term memory. Know what type of test you're gonna take and the format. Sometimes it's good to get a heads up from your teacher what will be on the test and how it will be answered. Make sure you're caught up on all your assignments because sometimes that's the easiest way to study for a test. If you have missing assignments, that means there's gaps in knowledge that you should have learned in your classwork or homework that you might not have learned because you didn't turn it in. Identify problem areas that you struggle in and get assistance on those areas. If there's extra credit in class, take advantage of that because that will help you reinforce concepts into your long-term memory. Finally, the last category for study skills is reading. Now reading can be broken down into categories that don't include reading, which means you can be an auditory learner, like we learned in the study skills checklist in the previous videos. And what that means is that maybe you learn better by listening to someone. So whether or not you're re-listening to your lecture by recording or you're reading the notes more than once and highlighting and taking notes. These are all different repetitious skills to reflect what you know. Try to make notes in the margin like Cornell notes. Don't put off reading assignments until the last minute because when you're under pressure to read, you won't be present and really digest what you're understanding. Keep from dozing off, so don't try to read in bed or at night and read when you have the most energy. Try and talk about what you learn and read with your friends and discuss it. If you don't understand a word, you can use Google to define it or to look it up in the dictionary. Pace yourself when you read. So don't try to read 50, 100 pages a night because it's unrealistic. Your mind is like a rubber band. So the more you stretch it and the more you want to force yourself to learn something, it's gonna snap back. And when that snap back happens, you might end up binging on video games, on Netflix, on something else because you overspent your body and your body so desperately wants to stop studying. That's why consistency is the key and trying not to cram or read everything or study the night before is so important. Pay attention to key concepts and notes in your chapters and reflect on those so that you can remember them well. This concludes the four categories that we want to learn for study skills. Thank you and I hope you all have a great day and continue to do well in your education.